welcome to Snap-on's Torque Training video series. Snap-on understands the critical nature of the job that you do, so please work safely and always read your owner's manual completely before using your torque instrument. Always wear safety glasses when using any tool. Today's video covers the proper use of Snap-on's digital torque and angle wrench called ATEC. The Snap-on ATEC is well suited for most critical torque applications. A broad selection of drive sizes and torque ranges are available from Snap-on. Battery installation. To begin using your ATEC torque wrench, first install the batteries. Remove the battery cap and install the three included double A batteries, positive end first. Replace cap. When the batteries are installed, the wrench will start automatically, the handle will vibrate, the LEDs will light, and the buzzer will sound. This is a self-test feature that will occur whenever batteries are changed. Once the batteries are installed, a battery level indicator is visible in the upper left corner of the screen. Replacement batteries may be of any type, including rechargeable batteries. Quick Use Torque Mode if the wrench was powered down in the angle mode, the wrench will have to be set down to zero tear the angle function. Set the units of torque by momentarily pressing the U button. The units of torque may be foot-pounds, inch-pounds, newton meter, and kilogram meter. Your wrench may have different torque units depending on the size of the wrench. Now adjust to the desired torque value by using the up or down arrow buttons. For this demonstration, we'll set the wrench to 35 foot-pounds of torque Pressing and holding either button will speed the adjustment. Now it's ready to use. Grip the tool in the center of the handle and pull slowly and steadily until you see the yellow LEDs light in succession. Slow down and when the two green LEDs light, stop. Should you exceed the target torque, the red LEDs will light. Then you may switch the ratchet lever to reverse and loosen the fastener. Apply torque again being careful to stop when the green LEDs light. You'll also feel vibration, hear the buzzer, and see the torque value on the screen. Quick Use Angle Mode If the wrench is in torque mode, select Angle Mode by pushing the Enter button until the angle mode is displayed. Use the up or down arrows to select the desired angle value. The wrench is now ready to use in the angle mode. For this demonstration, we're going to use 90 degrees of angle rotation. Apply angle in a smooth, steady pull. Do not jerk the wrench. The angle function performs best when the tool is turned at a rate of 6 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. Moving too fast will display angle error. Grip the tool in the center of the handle and pull slowly and steadily until you see the yellow LEDs light in succession. Slow down and when the two green LEDs light, stop. Setting a torque preset. Your Snap-on ATEC torque wrench will store up to 10 presets. The presets may be for torque or angle. To set a torque preset, select the torque page. Use the up or down arrows to select the desired units of torque. Then push and hold the U button for three seconds. The wrench will prompt you, add preset. Use the up arrow button to highlight yes, then push enter. Now the wrench will prompt you to enter the minimum torque value. For this demonstration, we'll use 25 foot-pounds of torque. Once you select a minimum torque value, push the Enter button, and the wrench will now prompt you to enter the maximum torque value. We'll use 30 foot-pounds as an example. Now push the Enter button, and it'll prompt you for a batch count. The batch count is the number of fasteners you'll be torquing in a sequence. This is an optional feature. Just push the Enter button to bypass. For this example, we'll set the batch count to 10 by pushing the up arrow button. Now we have set up PSET01, which stands for preset number 1. You can see the value 10 in the upper right hand corner, which is showing the batch count or the number of fasteners being torqued. As the torque is applied, the batch count will count down to 0 and then start over. Pressing Enter will take you back to the main measurement home screen. Setting an angle preset. Angle presets are set much in the same way torque presets are set. First, push the Enter button to display the angle page. Now push and hold the U button for 3 seconds until you're prompted, Add Preset. 
Use the up arrow button to highlight yes and push the enter button. You'll be prompted to enter the minimum angle value. Enter the value using the up or down buttons. We'll set the minimum angle at 45 degrees. Now push enter. Now you'll be prompted to select the maximum angle. By default, the maximum value is plus 4% of the minimum torque or angle value. We'll set the maximum angle to 50 degrees. Hit enter again to set the batch count. We'll set it to 10 as before and then push enter. Now you've set up another preset, but this time in the angle mode. Now we've set up two presets. Use the up or down buttons to switch between presets or use the enter button depending on the wrench version. Pressing enter will take you back to the main measurement home screen. You may edit or delete any preset at any time you wish. Just select the preset you'd like to edit or delete. Hold the U button for three seconds. Make your changes and hit enter. When a preset is deleted, it does not affect the numbering order of the other stored presets. Main Menu To access the main menu, push and hold the Enter button for three seconds. The first option is Language. Push Enter and select English, French, Spanish, or German. You'll be prompted to select a comma or a point as the separator. Press Enter to escape. Next, scroll down to Head Length. This is used when an adapter is added to the wrench. Push the Enter button to set up. To set the proper head length, first measure the distance from the center of the square drive to the center of the fastener using a precision ruler. If the adapter head is applied at a 45 degree angle, the measurement must be taken at a 90 degree angle to the torque wrench. If the adapter is applied at a 90 degree angle, no adjustment in the torque wrench value is required. If the units of torque are in foot-pounds or inch-pounds, the head length will be displayed in inches. If the torque units are in newton-meter or deciNewton-meter, then the head length will be expressed in millimeters. You may push the U button to switch between inches and millimeters. Use the up arrow button to set the head length, then push the enter button to move to the next digit depending on the version. Push the enter button to accept it, and then scroll back up to exit and press enter once again. Now you'll see the words offset and use displayed on the screen. This tells you that the wrench will automatically adjust for the adapter length. This offset and use will be displayed until the head length is set back to zero. To remove the offset and use mode, return to the main menu, select head length, and reset the length value to zero. You can do this quickly by depressing both the up and down buttons simultaneously. Hit enter to escape. Whenever a target torque or target angle is achieved, the wrench automatically stores the torque or angle value, and if the clock has been set, records the date and time that it was collected. The wrench will store and display up to 50 torque and or angle values. When the memory is full, MF will appear in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. The wrench has a circular buffer, which means when the memory is full, newest data replaces oldest data stored. Now we'll cover the show data, clear data, and cycle count functions. To access the menu, push and hold the Enter button for three seconds. Now scroll down to Show Data and push Enter. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the number of values that are stored. This number may be torque or angle or combination of both. These values may be scrolled through by pushing the up or down arrows. To exit, push the Enter button once again. Now to clear that data, highlight the words Clear Data in the main menu and hit Enter. Now hit the up arrow to select yes, and then push the enter button once again. And that's it, all data is cleared. Now we'll take a look at the cycle count feature. Go back to the main menu, highlight cycle count, and push the enter button. The cycle count shows you the number of times the wrench has been used either for torque or angle. To clear the cycle count, go up to clear and push the enter button. Settings menu. To access the settings menu, Press and hold the Enter button for three seconds. Then scroll down to highlight Settings. Press Enter. The first item on the Settings menu is Show Info. Press the Enter button to display the info page. The item on the top is Cal, which stands for the date the wrench was last calibrated. The second item is ISD. This is the in-service date, which is the date when the wrench clock was first set and put into service. 
TCF is torque control factor and ACF is angle control factor. This is information used only by the factory. Scroll down for firmware version number, over torque count. TQZ is torque zero value, ANZ is angle zero values, both for factory use only. Now hit enter to escape this menu. The next step down is sleep time. Use the arrow buttons to make your selection. Press enter to accept. The next item down is LCD contrast. The factory default is 40. Press the enter button to accept. The next item down is key beep. This refers to the beeping sound the buttons make when they're depressed. Disabling this feature does not stop the wrench from beeping when the target torque or angle value has been reached. Highlight your desired option and press enter. Next we have auto backlight. Enabling this feature means the torque wrench backlight will light whenever the tool is being used. This is great for use in low light areas. Simply highlight your choice and push the enter button. Now we have toggle backlight. Enabling this option allows you to control the backlight by depressing the light button in the lower right hand corner. When enabled, pressing the light button turns the backlight on and pressing it again turns it off. When disabled, pressing the light button turns the backlight on and it turns off automatically 6 seconds after the last button is pressed. Highlight your selection and push the enter button. Next is vibration configuration. You may disable vibration by using the up button to change to off and pressing the enter button. Now use the down arrow button to highlight exit and press the enter button to exit the settings menu. Configure menu. To access the configure menu, press and hold the enter button for three seconds, then scroll down to highlight configure and press the enter button. The first item on the menu is Mode Setup. Pushing the Enter button allows you to select between enabling or disabling the Torque Then Angle feature. The Torque Then Angle feature is an optional feature that allows you to apply torque and then the wrench will automatically switch to the angle mode. This would be used in an instance where you wanted to apply torque and then immediately apply angle to the same fastener. Use the up arrow button to highlight exit and then press the Enter button to escape. The next item is Delete Presets. Highlight your desired option, then press Enter. The next item is Calibration. This is used to calibrate the torque wrench. This function is password protected and is only accessible to qualified torque technicians. The next item down is Set Date Time. The date time must be set if you want to use the Cal Needed Calibration Reminder feature or if you want the stored data to display the date and time. Now we've come to the set calibration interval. Press the enter button to adjust the calibration interval. This is the period of time you wish to be reminded to have the wrench recalibrated. Use the arrow buttons to make your selection. Hit enter to escape. This feature does not prevent the wrench from operating. It's only a calibration reminder. Highlight exit and press the enter button to escape. Storage and calibration. When storing your ATEC, it's not necessary to remove the batteries from the unit. Make sure the unit is powered down and store in the box along with the manual and the certification. Store in a cool, dry place. Snap-on recommends that the unit be recalibrated at least once a year. Please contact your Snap-on representative for the address of the nearest Snap-on repair facility. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation by Snap-on.